DuPont Innovation lowers LCOE by increasing cell efficiencies and system lifetime while reducing total system cost. Materials matter. Hello and welcome to this week's PV Tech newscast. Coming up, module prices rise for the first time in four years. ABB acquires Power One for more than one billion US dollars. And the world's largest battery storage system is to be installed in Japan. PV module prices have risen for the first time in four years, reflecting a newly restored balance in global supply and demand, research by IHS claims. The average selling price for Chinese crystalline silicone modules shipped to the EU increased by 4% in March, the first monthly rise since January 2009. The upward price trend is set to continue with a 1% increase expected in April and an average of a 4% rise during the next three months. IHS ascribes the upswing in prices to the shift in volume module shipments away from Europe to China and Japan's booming markets. A further factor cited by IHS and already extensively analysed by PV Tech is the impact of the compulsory registration ordered by the European Commission of all Chinese solar imports into the EU ahead of the possible imposition of trade duties. Although IHS did not guide ASP trends in 2013, Dr. Henning Rich, director and principal analyst of Photovoltaics, told PV Tech that the recent uptake of module prices in Europe and the forecasted increase until June will help to stabilize the average selling price globally in 2013. But other analyses of the world module market suggest the industry is not completely out of the woods yet. Earlier NPD Solar Buzz predicted that leading module companies would not return to profitability until 2015, on the back of slowing ASP declines, higher global installations and further company consolidations. PV module revenue in 2013 is expected to decline 20% to $20.5 billion, US dollars, down from $25.5 billion in 2012, due to only a small increase in global installations this year and falling ASPs. While revenues will remain below 2012 levels during 2013 and 2014, they're set to increase from 2015 onwards, reaching US$32 billion US dollars by 2017, generating a profitable environment, according to the market research firm. In newly released first quarter results, major material supplier DuPont expects module production to be flat this year, as with 2012, though production is expected to increase through the second half of the year. One of the biggest industry consolidation stories this year surfaced when major power and automation conglomerate, ABB, made its move to become the dominant PV inverter specialist with the planned acquisition of number two market leader, Power One, in an all-cash transaction of approximately 1,028 million US dollars. ABB cited the rapidly growing PV inverter market and the opportunity to lead and innovate with rewards for players that invest heavily in R&D and provide differentiated product offerings as key aspects to its market sector thrust. ABB expects to generate sales of more than 100 million US dollars in the PV inverter market in 2013. ABB was ranked as the sixth largest PV inverter supplier in 2013 by GTM Research, while Power One was ranked second. Ash Sharma, Senior Research Director from IHS, told PV Tech that ABB has been focused on a small number of core markets in the past. The acquisition of Power One brings with it instant presence in a number of top tier PV markets where it previously had no or very little business. LDK Solar took a massive hit in the fourth quarter of 2012, reporting net losses of 517 million US dollars. Customers would seem to have deserted the wafer and module supplier in waves as it struggles to stay afloat and avoid the bankruptcy fate of big rival SunTech. 
LDK Solar reported total sales in the fourth quarter of 2012 of only 135 million US dollars, compared to 291 million US dollars for the third quarter, almost half the figure guided when it reported prior quarter results at the beginning of December 2012. Operating margin for the fourth quarter was negative 300%. Far worse is management guidance that sales are expected to be in the range of only 80 to 100 million US dollars for the first quarter of this year. The company ended the fourth quarter of 2012 with only 98.3 million US dollars in cash and cash equivalents and 167 million US dollars in short term pledged bank deposits. In related news, LDK sold its 2.2 gigawatt hefi based solar cell plant for just 19.4 million US dollars to a local state-owned enterprise as part of its dash for cash. However, the future of LDK solar subsidiary Sunways looks increasingly uncertain after its banks cancelled its 6.6 .6 million euro line of credit. Another company in financial stress, Solar World, reported that 2012 losses could reach as much as 550 million euros. The company has already delayed reporting full year results while it talked with creditors. But rumours have started that Solar World is in survival talks with an unidentified State of Qatar investor connected to its previously announced joint venture to build a polysilicon plant in the country. Flexible SIG's thin film startup Solar Power, with PV manufacturing operations in the state of Oregon, United States, is facing tough times and is reported by local press to be shutting down its manufacturing operations. The plant, which opened last September with 60 employees, was funded partly by 219 million US dollars in private equity and was awarded a 197 million US dollar loan guarantee from the US Department of Energy for Manufacturing. And finally, reflecting the innovations and dynamic business environment in the downstream PV industry, one of the most popular stories this week related to news of the world's largest battery storage system to be installed in Japan. Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry announced plans to install a battery storage system with a capacity of 60 megawatt hours at an electrical substation in the prefecture of Hokkaido, which has a high number of solar installations. PV Tech had reported that Japan added 1.3 gigawatt of new PV capacity between April 2012 and the end of January 2013 and forecasted an install of between 6.1 and 9.4 gigawatt this year. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.